Hey my little Peacherinos and welcome back to a new video. If you're wondering why I look a little bit different, it's because I have no makeup on. <laughs> You guys have been asking for a skincare video for a while. I've been putting it off because the last time I had no makeup on. You guys thought I was sick. <laughs> but I know how important like knowing about skincare is and feeling clueless about skincare is. So I thought I would give you guys at least some advice on what my skincare regime is in case it can help you guys as well. So don't forget if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and drop a comment below because apparently the YouTube algorithm has changed again and now they love comments and likes and interactions again. I can't keep up with them, but if you just like try and give my video a lot of um engagement support so like comments and likes apparently youtube then likes your video i don't know i don't know guys i feel silly asking you to do this but if you could it would really help me out especially when i look like <laughs> So before I get into it, I thought it's best to talk about what my skin is because not everyone's skin is the same. This is a routine built around my specific skin. So my skin has always, since I like hit puberty, been uh, like oily combination skin. So my T-zone gets very oily. In fact, this shine here is oil currently, but the sides don't really tend to get that oily. However, these bits here for me are super, like I will get spots in this area if I'm not careful. So I'm quite spot prone as well. But my skin also can very easily get dehydrated. You're probably wondering how can oily skin be dehydrated? I think most people when they get oily skin, the first thing they do, and I know I did, did this, was like, I need to strip away all the oils, get them out of there. But the problem with doing that is you actually end up making your skin more oily because if your oily skin is dehydrated, it tries to rehydrate itself by producing more oil. So a lot of my skincare regime is built around trying to like help minimize the oil, but also trying to put as much like uh, moisture back into my skin. Skin. And also if you put a lot of moisture into your skin, you kind of get this like that your skin look like oops out a little bit and if you're getting older that is a good thing to do because the more you can like your skin then um the less your lines will show the more like youthful and healthy you will look so trying to have like skin is actually a good thing the older you get weird i know so also an important part of skincare is budget once i started caring about my skincare which was to be fair like mid-teens i've always spent quite a lot of money on skincare based on my personal budgets but my logic is you only get one skin so i kind of spend and look after it quite a lot basically you have to you don't really get a second chance with skin so you've got to look after it the best you can while you're young i started using anti-aging products when i was like 17 years old and i still use them now and there's a few other skincare things i do that you're probably so bored of hearing but one is drink drink lots of water or in my case peach juice i also drink like a lot of green teas ginger teas lemon teas in the day since coming back from bali bali again class just to try and get as much um hydration that's the word i'm looking for hydration as i can because again it's the exact same logic of putting moisture into your face but from the other side your skin will look look so much better if it's not dehydrated. The more dehydrated your skin is, the older you're gonna look. And also it needs that moisture to make it look plump and healthy and happy. And also all that nonsense, you know what, like washes out your toxins. Uh, we're here for the fat cheeks. That's the only reason we're here. And then one thing I've cared about absolutely loads since, since my early twenties, I would say, is keeping out the sun and using SPF 50 on my face every single day. It is the one thing you can do to help really stop aging, stop skin damage, my family's prone to moles and quite a few members of my family's moles have had to be removed because they've become abnormal so like you can see like if you look at my skin i'm not freckly but i am moly and that is my skin type so i just need to be careful with moles and the final thing i promise i'm gonna get into it in a moment the final thing for me that helped massively with my spots i was so spot prone and i'd get them here here and also around my temples as well for me it was dairy cutting out dairy made my skin so much easier to manage like also my skin's still oily when i cut out dairy it's a hard thing to do because i was obsessed with cheese and i'm sure everyone's obsessed with cheese try it for like six months that's how long it would take and see if you get a reduction in the amount of spots you get because it was like so insane for me how much easier my skin is to handle now although another thing i would say is eat healthy foods because your skin is a result of what you put into your body i'll never drink like coca-cola i'll never like eat loads of chocolate and stuff because it's kind of hard when you're vegan <laughs> What you put into your body is what you get out from the outside as well. So that's just logic. Okay, I said I was gonna get out that out of the way. So let's get into my actual skincare regime. This is my morning regime before I put my makeup on. And what I've done this morning is washed my wig, which means that uh, I've had to glue it back down again. So I don't know if you can see redness around here. This is from like the glue I use to stick my wig down. And also you get rid of the glue from your skin, you use alcohol. It's really not good for your skin. And as a result, my skin is a little bit sore. And also I usually would have done this skincare way 
way earlier, so my skin's been sat here like, well, I'm going to produce all the lab. So I have to try and get some of the oil away. And I don't like clit. Oh my gosh, that splashed all of my face. I don't like cleansing on a morning um, because I feel like if I cleanse and use bubbles and immediately strip away all the oil from the night, my skin just goes on this insane, like, well, I'm going to produce it all over again. And by 11 a.m., I will be super, super oily. Weirdly enough, I actually use a hydrating toner to wipe my face on a morning. I know people will say, you're not meant to wipe with toners, you're meant to splash them on. This is the toner that I use on a morning. It's the Body, Body Shop Vitamin E Hydrating Toner. And it's just super gentle. It's going to, like, help me, like, remove some of the oil, but it won't don't like strip all the moisture out of my skin. But I've kind of learned that if I try and do things harsh with my oil, it's not gonna work. So I have to kind of like work with the oil as like an alliance. And when the Great War is over, perhaps you'll remember I chose to help. Rather than trying to take away the oil. It's just the way I have to do things, I'm afraid. And as well, I'm super paranoid about using pads and dragging. Don't drag, almost just like feathery. Really wiping pads and stuff on your face is not a good thing. Yet my routine has a lot of them, so. Also everything from the body shop is um, like never tested on animals. So it's really good in that regard. Okay, so now my skin is like clean, but it doesn't have that squeaky clean feel, which I hate. So that's really good. And we're still on it with the oil. This is a company called Aborian, who are like Korean, uh, French sort of skincare. And this bamboo matte lotion is like an entire regime for or oily skin and it kind of works like an astringent it's gonna just try and reduce the oil like production during the day so you shake it up otherwise it's like it's like clear and it's got like a uh, sediment so you mix them together then just pop it onto your hand and get it all over your keyboard and I just kind of pat it all into my face just like let my skin just like drink drink it all up it's like it's morning green tea really but it's bamboo, so obviously not anything like that really. And I'm not like, I'm just like gently like pushing it into my skin. But honestly, it, it sinks in pretty quickly, which is good. Ali's got like normal to dry skin. You can put anything on that boy's face and it will just put... My skin will not allow you to do that. Like, no way. Oily skin has a limit to how much it can absorb in a certain amount of time. So you've just got to be aware of that. So this is the next thing I'm going to use. This is an eye cream. I actually love Dr. Dennis Gross uh, products so, so much. Like, they're just absolutely amazing. They are expensive though. So this is what I'm talking about with budget. I didn't use this stuff when I was like a teenager. I wouldn't have been able to afford this stuff when I was a teenager. There is alternatives you can use. This stuff, the reason I'm using it is because it has retinol in it. And retinol is like one of the things that is actually meant to reduce aging and the reason I'm using like it on my eyes is because I can tell that my eyes are like gonna be can you see this little I mean there's barely anything but let me show you I can see like when I smile here my eyes are gonna be like prone to aging oh man this is <laughs> Can you see like I've got like marks and scar I can see freckles here like wow. But yeah, you can probably see like some red marks. This is like healing from spots. I have the kind of skin where if I get a spot, it takes me like months to heal. Sometimes red marks stay there for a year. You will see in my night um, like skin regime that a lot of the stuff we do is to try and uh, reduce the like the damage and red mark from spots gradually over time. So one thing you probably notice is I'm putting all of my eye care on with my ring finger. The logic of that is your ring finger is meant to be your weakest finger. A skin around your eyes is really thin. Anything you put on with your eyes you do not want to drag like I'm putting this on so carefully and almost like tapping around the edges just because you don't want to be like rough with your eye area because by putting products on that are meant to help it you will actually just damage it more. Skin is a fickle. Okay, so next up, we have some products from The Ordinary. Please ignore all the glue on my hands. Uh, the Ordinary is awesome because it's really, really reasonably priced. And this is their um, absorbable glucose glucoside vit uh, solution 12%. Basically, it's vitamin C cream. And I use this on a morning. Some, some people tell you to use it on a night, but... And vitamin C is just meant to help brighten your skin. You might go a little bit red after it, but it'll calm down. And also those marks that I was on about on my skin, it will help just gradually reduce them over time. It has a little bit of a resurfacing effect and anti-aging. So also if you are using vitamin C, like that is the color. That's an okay color. It's got a little bit of yellow to it, but not much. The minute your vitamin C starts to go orange or yellow, throw it away because it ain't gonna work anymore. It's oxidized. So I have to like wait for stuff to sink in. It's still a little bit sticky, but this is uh, the oily skin plight. So what I'm going to do while it's sinking in is my eyes have sunk in pretty well. This is the next thing that I put on. It's part of the same um, regime, 
I don't know, the same product. Again, it's this uh, Ferulic and Ferulic, that's not sound like it's pronounced right, but whatevs. And retinol eye cream. Um, again, anti-aging, looking after those little peepers. I find if I don't moisturize my eyes enough on a morning, if I put like foundations or like concealers or anything underneath my eyes, they go like all into the creases and stuff. And like, they just make you look older and worse, especially if you put powder on top. So the more moisture I can like get on my eyes and the more plumped they are in the morning, the better my makeup's gonna go on. See how well timed I've got this. I'm like eye cream, face cream, eye cream. Now back to another face cream because this is dried. And this is what I use. Again, we're back in the ordinary. This is the niacinamide 10% and zinc 1%. It has vitamins in it. Great. But also the reason I use it is it helps reduce current spots and prevent future spots from happening. And also it's meant to help with blackheads, but I'll show you what I do for blackheads in my night regime. Now some people have used this and actually found that it increases their spots. So it is like a person by person basis. But for me, I oh god. It helps mine. It definitely, it definitely helps mine. And now we just wait for it to sink in. Usually I would be like doing my um, teeth or like getting dressed or like making a tea and stuff at this point. So I'll just brush my eyelashes. Now that that starts to sink in, this is how I layer in my moisture for like oily skin. This is the stuff that I use. It's called Hada Labo. It's Japanese. I first used the one in the white bottle for this um, like ages ago, like like years and years ago. And I just found it, it, I hated it. It just didn't do anything. I thought I'd give this premium version a try. And I love this stuff. I love this stuff so, so much because I struggle to get moisture into my stupid like oily skin that's like, eh! It likes this. This gets through the doors. So this is why we love this. So what you do is you put like not much on. Like I've not put loads on that. I mean, a little bit on, rub it around and then just tap it into my skin. This is slow. Like you have to get up earlier if you want to do my skincare regime. Mine has a lot of products in it. I know some people are like, oh, there's just, you don't need to put that much stuff on your skin. La, la, la. You don't need to, but like I want to and it benefits my skin. So I don't even care. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it. If I just washed my face with soap and then just went about the day, oh my gosh, you could fry eggs on my face by like half 10, I swear. And then my goal with this is basically put as many layers on as my skin allows. Usually it's two or three. At certain times of the month, my skin needs more moisture than others. Like it will just absorb more. If you're a lady, you know. I mean, it's kind of, it's actually absorbed that really quickly. It's like a little bit sticky, but not much. So that means she's like, I want more. Please, sir, can I have some more? Well, yes, you can, skin. That's what we're here for. This ain't no all of a twist. You can kind of tap if you want it to go in quicker. Just like little, little fairy taps, not like, ow. This kid's gonna go really red now. Oh my gosh, look where I slapped myself. <laughs> Why did I do that? I'm gonna put another layer in because we want that chuk -chuk kind of effect where it's like, like your skin's like, Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put on is back to Eborian as well. You can tell I've got some like favorite products. Um, I've got their matte cream. This is their glowy cream. Now that my skin isn't as oily, I go for the glowy cream in the day um, just so that my skin looks a little bit more like glowy, obviously. But I still use their matte cream on a night just to try and keep it a little bit more matte as well. I'll show you later on in the video. This video is gonna be long. And I really like this stuff because my skin absorbs it really, really well. It means if any of this hasn't fully finished thinking in, this like pulls it in. <laughs> kind of cheating, but hey, we ain't got all day, you know? And then the final step is also the most important step. If you only do one thing, this room's really hot underneath these lights. If you only do one thing um, out of everything I've just shown you today, make it be SPF. So this is the FPS I'm using today. It's the Bio UV Face Milk in Factor 50. I actually don't usually use this one. I use the Body Shop um, Factor 50 Essence, which I love, love, love so much as well, but I left mine in Bali. Bali again, Claire. The reason I love that one as well is because that one is cruelty free. Most Asian skincare, like it's a real mix. 
mix. Some of it is cruelty free because Korea and I think Japan do not require animal testing, so they don't test their products on animals. But the same with Western companies, if they want to sell to China, then they do have to sell uh, test their products on animals. The good thing is, I think the Chinese government is now going to end um, their requirement to test their products on animals. It will be maybe like 2021 or something, but I I'm pretty sure. Let me just check that because I could be spreading lies right now. It looks like by 2020, animal um, compulsory testing on products will be lifted in China. And also there's two new ways to test that don't include animals. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, this stuff I've used in the past before I started switching to cruelty-free products. So I still had loads of it left over. So since I ended up leaving mine in Bali, this is the only product I've got to hand at the moment. And what I will say about this and all of like the Asian skincare, uh, Asian SPF is so much better than ours because it's like chemical SPF and this even like leaves the skin it's called face milk it almost like acts like a primer like it's so much better than our like oily kind of like sticky horrible SPFs it doesn't feel like that at all it just sinks straight in it does leave a little bit of a white cast but this stuff's amazing but you'll probably see what I mean once I finish putting it in about like a white cast so yeah you see how my skin has gone like milky pink it's because this the, their skin hairs kind of leave like a white cast yeah if you ever watch bts bon voyage and you see them put um their they'll be using like korean products like japanese um spf they put it on and then they're instantly like absolutely pure white this is why it leaves a white cast but it's fine because i'm putting makeup on after it does look fun when ali does it though which i make him do because he has to wear spf as well so that is basically the whole of my morning skincare done the final thing i do this is kind of starting to go into makeup a little bit but i use this this um, Smashbox primer water, this one right here. And it's basically just finalizes like my skincare. I feel like it all just pushes into my face and it gets it ready for using makeup, which is obviously really nice. So <coughs> straight into my mouth there. Well done, Claire. I put a lot on, um, yeah, <laughs> like literally like this. I even, when I finish my makeup, I do this and it looks like I've just washed all my makeup off. But then like two minutes later, it's just set and it looks so much better. This is how I look when I finish my skincare on the morning. Pretty like juicy, let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> it will sink in, I promise. If you guys want to see a makeup one, I mean, I'll film it straight after this. I didn't want to put it in a skincare one because this one's already going to be so long, Jesus. Then let me know in the comments. I'm going to go into the night one now. Don't worry, this video's not over. But if you want to see the makeup one, I didn't want to include it in the skincare because not everyone wears makeup. So it's kind of like, like a different thing. So I'll do that as like a different video. But yeah, that will sink in and look more normal. I feel like I need to show you this so you don't freak out. Some people actually buy like little fans and like, this is, I need to get on that. Oh, Jesus. I try and ignore the bright red nose where I absolutely just KO'd myself. But yeah, see, it's in and already for makeup. So let's go to the night routine. <laughs>